every mission to space must go through a proper cleaning procedure before launch. But how clean are they really? Cleaning spacecraft is to prevent contamination in any place explored in space, aka planetary protection. Planetary protection was set up in 1967 as part of an international law known as the Outer Space Treaty. It was set up to limit the amount of Earth organisms that go into space. If, say, an Earth microbe were to land on another planet through one of our missions, it could cause major cross-contamination issues, like when collecting samples from that planet. This can cause problems with data analyses. If something from Earth mixes with something from another planet, how can we really tell the difference between, say, us and an alien? Not to mention if an organism from Earth were to land in a region where there's a high chance that life can survive, can someone say accidental colonization? A possible example is there are places on Mars with the potential of harboring water. I'd hate to imagine an Earth microbe landing there and accidentally spawning life. This is why we make sure to clean stuff that goes into space. In order to prevent biological contamination amongst the planets in our solar system and beyond, an international agency known as COSPAR has these set guidelines for launching missions into space depending on where they are going. For federal space agencies, rules and guidelines are mandatory and proper cleaning is monitored. But private sector space agencies don't necessarily have to follow the same rules for recent missions because there is currently little framework overseeing non-traditional commercial space missions, AKA sending humans into orbit, a rover to the moon, or a Tesla in space. Which is why the government is trying to pass what's known as the American Space Commerce Free Enterprise Act. Right now, before a company launches anything, they must first go through the Federal Aviation Administration to get a license to launch. The only thing is once the payload separates in space, the FAA no longer has authority. So depending on where the mission will go, COSPAR will determine the extent of sterilization. If you're sending something like a rover that will touch the surface of a planet, then it's time to start baking. This is a procedure used to clean the surface of a spacecraft of any earthly organisms. They do this by putting the spacecraft under very high amounts of heat for an extended period of time like 111 degrees Celsius for 30 hours. They can also use chemical sterilizers like alcohol or UV irradiation. Of course, some organisms can still survive, so no method is perfect. The PPO allows for up to 300,000 spores on a spacecraft, which seems like a lot, but they all fit on the head of a large pin. Doing multiple and thorough cleaning procedures is a must to be sure there are minimal lingering Earth microbes. Knowing that, what I'm wondering is if we have these strict regulations for when things leave Earth, then what happens when things enter Earth from elsewhere in the solar system? Couldn't they too contain contamination from another planet? Like meteorites that have landed here from Mars? Things that could survive in space are called extremophiles and they might exist inside rocks on Mars. But to get in there, we'll have to crack them open. Our sister show, Science in the Extremes, looks at that here. One last thing. Elon's Red Tesla Roadster did get licensed by the FAA for the launch, but does that mean it got thoroughly cleaned? SpaceX is yet to comment on that. Thanks for watching.